Today we're going to be talking about a lot of the downsides with feeding your snakes live food. So usually you have two options when you're going to go and feed your snake. Uh, most snakes are going to be eating rodents, whether it's mice or rats of all different sizes, and you can get them available frozen or live from different pet stores. So you might already know some snakes simply just aren't going to take frozen and they only take live. Many snakes can switch over. Uh, I've never had to deal with that, so I can't really tell you anything too specific on how to switch them over to frozen, but I am going to be giving you some reasons to encourage you to do so if you are feeding live. This is also just a way to, I guess, give my opinions on the big argument on whether live mice and rats are actually bad for snakes or not. The very first thing we can talk about are your benefits as the keeper. The most simple one being that frozen is just a lot cheaper. You can get them in pretty large bulks. I buy them in a couple hundred at a time and they are just cheaper by themselves. I think I can get them for like 75 cents to $2 per mouse depending on the size. And in addition to that, you don't have to keep them alive since they're already frozen. You just have to thaw them out and feed them. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is the actual impact on the mouse when you choose either live or frozen food. So firstly, live, obviously the snake. So the snake will bite the mouse, uh, preferably on the head, but it might miss the head. So maybe somewhere mid body or on the back. Then it can wrap up and constrict that mouse. Uh, and basically what they do is each time the mouse exhales, the snake can wrap tighter, which means that it cannot breathe. So it ends up becoming unconscious after basically being crushed and then being eaten. So when a mouse is fed live, it ends up dying from asphyxiation, which is the same deal with frozen mice. However, it's pretty different because the frozen mice aren't going to have to go through that actual like tightening and crushing of its body. It's only simply going to be asphyxiated, but this is usually called controlled atmosphere stunning. Basically what happens is they're put into some sort of large container uh, where it's airtight and people can control the gases going in and out. And the goal is to remove the oxygen and replace it with some sort of gas that isn't going to keep you conscious. The most commonly used one is carbon dioxide. Now this is a bit different from other chemicals or other gases, not chemicals, uh, because it is considered poisonous. But if you're using small amounts um, of this gas at a time, the mice don't appear to have any physical pain brought to them. If you just immediately go 100% full on carbon dioxide, this will be toxic and they will feel pain. But since people start just replacing the air slowly with the carbon dioxide, um, they really won't notice and then they'll just end up passing out before they really feel much. Even if they do feel some pain, it's definitely not gonna be compared to being fed live. Now we're gonna talk about the actual snakes themselves. So a lot of people say you can just feed your snakes live because it's natural but we've kind of talked about this before, just because something is natural doesn't mean it's the best for an animal. I guess a good way to kind of prove this is the fact that snakes and pretty much any animal is gonna have a much longer lifespan in captivity compared to in the wild, because you can really remove a ton of those dangers. But the main danger comes when your snake is going in for the strike and the kill of the mouse or rat, it grabs it, and in that first few seconds, uh, since it's gonna take a while for that animal to actually die when the snake is holding on, it has time to potentially turn around and bite the snake that's biting it. Even if the snake did bite the mouse right on the face, the mouse still has claws, and mouse claws are sharp if you've ever felt them, so they can easily scratch the snake's eyes, the scales, uh, and all this stuff can result in bleeding or injury, and it has in fact killed quite a few snakes in the past. People say like, oh, I'll just supervise the snake while it eats, but that's not gonna be too useful if you're feeding it. Like it's, it's really quick. It's all gonna happen in just a couple seconds. The snake is gonna bite. The mice is going to immediately react in some kind. Usually they're just gonna squirm around, but there is certainly that chance of the snake getting bit or scratched or something like that. So those are kind of the three main things that people talk about. Um, your benefit as the person or the owner, the mouse's benefit, as it's dying. And then of course the actual safety of your pet snake. It's gonna be more convenient to you because you can save money. You don't have to feed the animals. You can just keep them in the freezer until you actually need them. You can stock up in bulk. Um, it's much better for the mouse because based on all the evidence so far, it is way more humane for a mouse to die through a carbon dioxide gassing where they basically don't feel anything at all compared to being grabbed, strangled, and suffocated by a massive snake where it's completely helpless. And then of course the snake uh, is gonna be much safer when the food cannot fight back. Hopefully this gave you some new insight on feeding live versus frozen to your snakes. Of course, like I said, um, some snakes are only going to take live 
and it's not the end of the world, you can deal with it, but I definitely wouldn't start feeding live. Like I've seen some people say, they're gonna get a snake and switch it to live. I definitely wouldn't do that because it is quite difficult to move them back. But yeah, there's really no benefits in my opinion to feeding live. But let me know your thoughts and any other things that you've thought of during this video uh, in the comments. But that'll be it for this video. I'm Alex and thanks for watching.